Welcome uh, to this uh, edition of Chat with Chair. We are actually going to be discussing a very exciting uh, sector with a very renowned uh, expert in this field. Uh, we have with us uh, today Mr. Rajan Lutra. He heads the special projects uh, in the Chairman's Office and Reliance Industries. Uh, he's engaged in the startup and growth phase of Reliance Industries hydrocarbon and consumer businesses for 22 years. Uh, he has a unique experience in envisioning, planning, executing large-scale technology, innovation, and digital transformation services. He's been a founding member of the retail Reliance, Reliance retail team and helped design the business strategy and processes. Uh, he's deeply engaged with global innovation and startup ecosystems. Uh, his uh, interventions and really his contributions were instrumental in Reliance Industries investing in Australia Aerospace, a leading Indian drone startup. He's on the board of Video Netics uh, Technologies, India's number one video management company and a leading computer vision startup. In FIKI, he's been associated with many committees. He's currently a member of FIKI's National Executive Council and chair of the FIKI Committee on Drones, uh, driving industry academy collaboration aligned with the government vision for making India a uh, drone hub of the world. He has also co-chaired the, uh, the Fiki Homeland Security Committee for three years and initiated a huge number of new uh, things like smart motor management, counter drone, smart policing, and cyber crime management uh, initiatives. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, you, uh, Mr. Rajan Lutra, to this uh, very special edition of Chat with Chair. Thank you so much, sir. So, you know, I mean, drones are fundamentally unmanned uh, aerial vehicles or air vehicles, AL, uh, UAVs. Uh, they could be small uh, drones that we talk about for which are normally used in weddings and, you know, large, uh, larger drones used for special applications. And of course, people are even talking that you may not even require any pilots in the future in the Air Force uh, there, but the government also has uh, come up with a new set of rules, which are unmanned aircraft system rules of 2021. But in the pandemic, you know, I think uh, it has really highlighted the role of technology in reducing human interface. Uh, drones were engaged uh, for service delivery and vig vigilance around the world, not only in India. And given that context, a huge changing uh, scenario, uh, could you uh, share with us, you know, how big and what is the nature of the drone market in India? Absolutely. In fact, uh, quite honestly, drones have been uh, called as a transformative technology and many have compared the, uh, the technology itself to have an impact almost as much as the internet or the GPS has had on multiple different application areas. I think if we were to look at the drone market uh, in India, uh, we can look at it from five different perspectives. Uh, firstly, as part of the DPIT scale committee engagement uh, that FIKI has been uh, uh, partnering with, uh, we have done a very comprehensive bottom-up market study for the drone sector. And purely looking at the uh, defense, the homeland security, the commercial uh, space, as well as the counter drone market, our estimation uh, with the working group that we had uh, along with EY as our knowledge partner is giving us a market figure of almost uh, 300,000 crores, uh, which is almost $40 billion in India as a total addressable market potential. Uh, given the current size of the market, which is very small, I think this is a huge opportunity for uh, all the drone stakeholders in the Indian context. Uh, if we look at it from another angle, uh, uh, the minister himself has gone on record to say that India has more than 130 drone startups. So the innovation around the drone ecosystem is very robust. And this is uh, going to continue to grow almost uh, every passing year. If we look at it from an end user perspective, uh, we really see a large number of uh, defense and homeland security applications already uh, being in place, like you mentioned, even uh, for COVID pandemic response or even disaster management, and even uh, in the past for uh, defense and homeland security as well for more than a decade. But the commercial sector is just starting to pick up now. Uh, many use cases have happened. Uh, there are a lot of applications in the agriculture space, in the telecom sector, in the railways, in the uh, infrastructure, and apart from most of the corporates looking at it from safety and security use cases also. 
So it, it's just the beginning of a, a large, robust growth in the end user uh, segment as well, especially as the digitalization and the platform centric approach is now being leveraged by the corporates. And finally, given the uh, huge potential, now we see uh, many large uh, groups like uh, Reliance, like Tata, like Adani, Mahindra, Infosys, and many others have already made uh, or have uh, intent to make significant investments in the sector. Uh, the government itself uh, is now uh, also has set up a dedicated drone directorate uh, with a view to manage the unmanned uh, aircraft uh, systems uh, at at par in some shape and form in the near future with the with the aircraft or uh, the manned aircraft. But I think the market is just uh, limitless uh, from an overall application perspective. And the next uh, few years, we'll see that happening. Thank you for referring to this uh, 300,000 crore or 40 billion addressable market in India. But if you look at the current situation, a lot of drones, um, large majority of drones are imported. Uh, they vote in terms of number and value. And if you were to flip it in his head and say, you know, how could India become the manufacturing hub for drones? You know, how can we compete in terms of the price points and scale of uh, manufacturing? What needs to be done? And is does the whole Atmanirbhar uh, Bharat uh, kind of complement this? So there's still an agenda going forward. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, if we look at uh, the drone sector, we can broadly bucket these drones into three segments at, at a macro level. The first is the large uh, drones, which are large, which are in use by the defense forces or the, let's say, the homeland security applications for aerial surveillance and monitoring and all the other uh, sensitive applications. Uh, there, we are seeing uh, a large uh, set of global companies from uh, US from Israel and from European countries as well, uh, planning or have already partnered with uh, Indian players. And they are uh, setting up, uh, let's say, the production in India. Uh, there are a couple of uh, significant uh, interventions which have already happened, and I'm sure more are going to follow that route. If you look at these small drones, uh, which are the, uh, the segments which are one level below, uh, there we have the startups uh, targeting that sector and already we have a few successful startups which have uh, demonstrated uh, a high quality of uh, local uh, design development and uh, manufacturing in India. They are obviously dependent on the components and the payloads being imported from abroad. Uh, in that sector, I think for becoming competitive, we have started uh, engaging as Fiki Committee on Drones with a uh, with uh, the battery players, with the composite players, with the people who are uh, in adjacent sector where we can uh, leverage their, uh, let's say, volume, volume uh, and productions into the drone component sector as well. But the volumes currently are small, and I think some of them will have to take a bet in uh, on the future market potential. Lastly, I think on the consumer drones, uh, that's an area where today uh, a lot of the imports which you referred to are largely on the consumer drones. And I think there... It's just a matter of time till the time we have the volumes being uh, adequate enough for players to focus on that sector also. So in a very interesting, you talked about, uh, you know, in the second segment, how you're looking at creating the linkages across the different, uh, you know, component manufacturers, et cetera. But uh, is there a kind of an innovation and R&D uh, ecosystem in India for drones or, you know, what are we uh, as Fiki uh, proposing in, uh, going forward? So, uh, I think uh, given our success uh, in the space sector, uh, many of the uh, academic institutions, uh, all the, most of the IITs and even some of the institutions around science and engineering, uh, almost all of them have uh, uh, started demonstrating the success of uh, not just having a theoretical uh, development or R&D taking place, but many of them have been showcased as uh, generating tangible outcomes and converting them into products which have now been successful in the market. Out of the startups that I mentioned, a huge amount of those startups have come or have been incubated out of those academic institutions. And I think the guidance and encouragement from the professors, the, uh, the innovation by the youth, as well as the, and the young founders, and uh, a lot of that is now uh, coming into fruition. And I believe this is again an area where we can, uh, we only need to provide them the 
enabling platforms and the market uh, demand so that a lot of uh, more such innovation can see the light of the day and see success. Uh, at FIKI Committee on Drones, we have been encouraging specific recommendations on uh, providing special status to some of these startups, including the kind of funding directly and through, let's say, the startup-related funds. Uh, we have even recommended a, a joint research assistance council being set up for this sector. But uh, that is part of the engagement we are having right now uh, with DPIIT and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. You know, you mentioned there are a lot of startups and sort of established players here, and this is akin to an aircraft, right? It's like an unmanned uh, aircraft. Uh, so uh, it's a very nascent sector. You know, how, how have the kind of regulations evolved in this, and you know, are the startup conducive or uh, what would do? Entries, ent entrance, or existing players in this uh, you know, sector need to know. So, uh, I think the uh, regulatory ecosystem is uh, a work in progress, if I can call it that. There has been a lot of uh, uh, effort that has been put in by the Ministry of Civil Aviation over the last 18, 24 months. And uh, we are seeing the outcome of that in many, many areas. Uh, the drone directorate that I mentioned to you about earlier, and uh, even the fact that we have now uh, the new U.S. rules that you mentioned about. Uh, the primary challenge here that is uh, uh, something which the Ministry of Civil Aviation has to balance is the on one side, there are safety and security concerns, uh, which are quite obvious. And on the other side, there are the enabling uh, regulations uh, that uh, we would like to have uh, uh, there being put in place for the commercial usage of drones. So uh, it, it's not an envious task uh, that they are at, playing at hand. Uh, FIKI Committee on Drones has been engaging with them for the last almost uh, from the beginning. And we believe uh, we are trying to get the, uh, the feedback from the industry stakeholders uh, as well as the academia and the end users uh, out to the, uh, these policy stakeholders. Uh, I think one of the other areas that we should be very uh, uh, proud of is the fact that uh, some unique uh, regulatory provisions have already been put in place, uh, which uh, have helped uh, some of the concerns being addressed. And I'm sure uh, our further deliberations on these policies will, will continue to uh, uh, keep the uh, engagement going. I think the drone sector is a shining example where uh, coordination between government authorities, industry, and academia has really uh, come out uh, in a very, very close-knit manner. You know, we also just you just briefly mentioned this uh, counter uh, drone is equally important. You know, what is this, and you know, uh, why is it important, and what are your views on this sector? Uh, so the the threat from rogue drones uh, is something that uh, we at FIKI uh, in our previously in our Homeland Security Committee and now in our uh, drone committee as well, uh, have been uh, collecting feedback and uh, uh, gathering the need for such uh, uh, so-called counter UAS systems. Uh, see, effectively, uh, if you look at it, uh, uh, even a small drone uh, produced uh, in large volumes, which are uh, more than two lakh of them are today, uh, apparently supposed to be in India already, even though uh, not uh, through the legal route. But each one of them can be converted to or plugged into uh, some kind of an harmful uh, application just by a little bit of rigging. And that is of serious concerns, uh, not just in India, but across the world. So from a large uh, threat from non-state actors to the small drones being rigged as uh, aerial IEDs, it's a huge uh, safety concern from multiple standpoints, not, not only in the government sector, but even in the private sector, as we have seen happening across the Middle East and other parts of the world. So the threats are real, and I think the concerns are very valid. And that's what I was referring to as the balancing act that has to be put into place. That while So the new regulations, for example, now clearly articulate that uh, within five kilometers from the major airports and three kilometers from the smaller airports, you can't fly a drone. So I think those are uh, the balancing uh, uh, nature of the counter drone things that we need uh, to take into account. Uh, the market itself for the counter drone systems is estimated as per our assessment of almost uh, 49,000 crores. So, 
you know, now let's uh, just go to some fun part of this uh, sector. You know, I think uh, during the pandemic, uh, we heard of uh, some trials uh, of use of drones for delivery of consumer goods or medicine. I think there's some pilot going on in Hyderabad, uh, you know. And of course, there is this whole BB LOS, which is beyond uh, visual line of sight delivery. You know, how far are we and what are some of the exciting stuff that is actually happening in India? And how could members of FIKI actually make use of the drones that you and others manufacture in their business? Yeah, so I think uh, we have uh, uh, the so-called uh, pizza deliveries being uh, talked about for a very long period of time, right? That you could order a pizza and have it delivered at your home with a drone. So while those uh, are still uh, a little distance away, I think the government has been proactive in uh, permitting the trials uh, from a safety and operational uh, standpoint for more than 20 of these consortia uh, which have applied for the beyond visual line of sight trials. All the a lot of uh, approvals had to be uh, put into shape uh, before those trials could be conducted. Uh, all of that, I think, has almost happened, and uh, we would see the outcome of these BV loss trials uh, in the next uh, few months. I think once the outcomes are are uh, uh, successful, uh, I'm hopeful that uh, we will see beyond visual line of sight also being approved by the government agencies for the commercial sector. And the applications are huge, right? From uh, delivery of emergency max, uh, vaccines or uh, any other healthcare application to multiple consumer and supply chain applications as well. And I think that's just a matter of time till the time that becomes enabled. Uh, luckily, we are not far behind uh, from the developed uh, world in this area. Similar trials are taking place even in USA and Israel and elsewhere. So, yeah, just uh, just expanding that, on, uh, on just just what are you, know, you mentioned twenty trials. What are one or two things which uh, are generally known in the sectors and what are the applications that are we doing other than the pizza delivery which you talked about? I believe there's something on medicine done by Apollo and something else. I don't know what's happening. It might be interesting for members to know. Sure. So, in fact, uh, if we uh, look at one of the most successful companies in the emergency healthcare space using drones has been a company called Zipline, which in many countries in Africa and elsewhere have uh, been delivering uh, emergency medical supplies or even other uh, applications of uh, healthcare supply chain using drones. So these are, uh, let's say, point-to-point -point deliveries being uh, taking place uh, using the local uh, people being trained on uh, the operations of drones. Uh, similar trials have been conducted in India as well, uh, including multiple stakeholders who have uh, been looking at that entire opportunity. Uh, many people have even spoken about, uh, for example, uh, the transportation of uh, vaccines using drones as well. And if you look at on the, uh, the other space, uh, apart from the healthcare, uh, you have uh, the not only the last mile, but even I think wherever there is a remote uh, for example, in the entire northeastern sector, or even in the uh, up in the mountains, wherever there is a need for uh, more faster and uh, more cost-effective uh, use of, uh, let's say, the last mile supply chain, uh, drones can be a very effective tool there. So I believe there are some applications for monitoring projects and the this thing. So could you share? Because a lot of members would be actually in the process of uh, building something or constructing something. How could actually drones help them monitor the project from the comfort of their offices? Very, very uh, interesting because I think uh, already uh, the railways and uh, some of the uh, public sector companies have been given exemptions for using uh, drones for example, uh, pipeline uh, safety and security. So likewise for track monitoring, for uh, monitoring the progress of uh, construction projects, uh, these are all applications where uh, not only do you have an eye in the sky that can see what is happening and transmit that in real time to your control room or the operation center, but you could also have analytics uh, being there, which could uh, tell you exactly what the problem areas are or where the issues are that need to be addressed or where the progress has gone off well. I think the entire, uh, even in the construction and real estate sector, the application for drone uh, are going to uh, take, off, uh, take off in the next uh, uh, 12 to 18 months in my view. Very exciting. And, you know, I believe that in uh, one of the chemical factories, they also use it to identify a kind of a source of leak so that they could, where people could not get in. So the applications here are interesting. 
you could have your eye in the sky just to use your phrase that you used in a, in a manufacturing uh, plant. Uh, uh, you know, if there's a problem uh, or a remote, uh, uh, you know, assistance is required. So I think it opens up a huge opportunity and it's, it's really a productivity tool for also members and for other sectors as well, in, in addition to a last mile delivery uh, tool. I believe that uh, a lot of them are also used to monitor crops and things there. But uh, I think now let's uh, just um, you know, come and, uh, what are your plans for the uh, FICI committee on drones uh, for this year? And you know, what are the opportunities of the members to engage with the committee? Uh, you will be surprised, uh, Dilipji, that uh, during 2020, during the lockdown period, was in some ways or the other our most productive time. I mean, we managed to conduct significant uh, uh, workshops, seminars, engagements with the government stakeholders and the industry forums in uh, commenting on some of the draft rules that had been notified at that time and also getting uh, uh, the use cases being more uh, successfully discussed and deliberated. But I think now uh, for this year, uh, we have uh, broadly uh, three main focus areas, if I can call it that. Uh, one, in any case, is on uh, the uh, support to the policy regulation framework and also the action plan that we are have already been working on for the last six months, uh, the DPIT scale committee related uh, progress that we have made uh, significant progress. It's nearing completion and I would see uh, that being successfully uh, demonstrating the value that FIKI has brought to uh, the old sector. On the other side, we are uh, wanting to engage uh, more deeply with these startups and also the more established players in trying to get them uh, uh, to understand the future demand and then also engage with or bring the attention of the, uh, the venture capital and the private equity players in uh, making them uh, more aware of the potential of this sector and then getting some of these uh, uh, let's say the so-called fear of uh, investing in this sector to be removed. Uh, the third is obviously continuing to drive our uh, memberships and uh, the engagement that we have using uh, seminars and workshops that will continue as well, uh, including healthcare, including defense are two of the sectors we have immediately planned, apart from working jointly with some of the other FIKI committees as well. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rusha, for this huge, uh, you know, I think starting and telling us because I don't think many people know that it's a, you know, three lakh crore or a forty billion dollar opportunity, and uh, the existing players uh, need, uh, you know, cannot address that market. There's a huge opportunity for investment. There's a huge opportunity for private investors and investment companies to look at startups. There's an opportunity, and you know, you mentioned that academic institutions also are, uh, and, you know, enabling uh, startups there. So there's huge opportunity for people to get, uh, you know, engaged in the growth and development of this sector. Uh, you have actually talked about the large uh, beyond the visual light uh, side delivery uh, kind of a thing. I think you talked about 49,000 crore uh, market uh, there and the 20 consortia that are having trials. And I really liked your phrase, eye in the sky. And I think, you know, even members of FIKI who have uh, businesses in agriculture, in, in oil and gas, in, in in chemicals, in many, many sectors, and including sectors that require delivery or monitoring. Uh, I think that that's a very exciting opportunity for them to reach out uh, to you and your committee members to see what is possible. And thank you for sharing with us the whole policy uh, scenario, the policy action plan, and your initiatives for this year, as well as the whole thing of taking the DPIIT and the scale committee uh, things forward to make uh, India manufacturing hub for drones and maybe the drone capital of the world uh, going forward. Uh, most of us, and you know, actually mistake uh, drones for the drones that we see in weddings or parties, but I think there's more to the drone industry than that. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your views and your time with us today. Thank you.